Talking about the internal issues at the European level, Commissioner, I'd like to sit there just for a moment. Is this European bureaucracy? Over the years, EU lawmakers have come in for criticism for what's being called bonkers Brussels bureaucracy. The dead hand of bureaucracy is destroying innovation and destroying jobs in Europe. People seem to like calling the EU a bureaucracy, an excessively complicated thing that can be hardly understood. And they're not entirely wrong. The EU isn't easy to understand. However, this characterization hides a better description. The EU not as a bureaucracy, but as a technocracy, a system of government where decision makers are appointed on the basis of their expertise and ability. Although technocracies are obviously preferable to bureaucracies, technocracies can still have problems. In the Commission, policy is produced through multiple policy departments, known as Directorate Generals, and in these departments, there are hundreds of staff members working for the EU that weren't directly elected, but play a role in producing policy. It's easy to look at the hundreds of unelected EU staff members with different roles in different departments and cry bureaucracy, but this is actually more of an example of a technocracy because becoming one of these staff members is not easy. In order to get into the EU and become part of the staff, you have to take a test conducted by EPSO, the European Personnel Selection Office. The test that applicants have to take has an average success rate of 2%, which is lower than Harvard's acceptance rate. And although the process of becoming an official can change depending on the type of job an applicant wants in the EU, alongside a hard and selective test to begin with, it's very likely that the candidate will have to go through multiple layers of process. To really put this in perspective, between 2012 and 2018, 411,000 candidates competed for 7,000 positions on the EPSO reserve list. People that strongly believe in the value of meritocracy may think that this is good, a difficult process to filter out the most successful candidates, but the EPSO process is far from perfect and has a couple of issues. For one, the EU has struggled with recruiting officials and has had to change its recruitment process because of a lack of supply. Secondly, the distribution of staff in the Commission is not necessarily representative of Europe. The EU is highly biased towards Belgian nationality and lacks representation relative to population for countries like Germany, France, and also the UK before it left the EU. And this may be a necessary trade-off. It's not a given that experience will be spread equally across countries, and if institutions prioritize national representation, they may lose something in regards to specialized knowledge. However, a selection procedure based on filtering out the best candidates can also feed into the perception of a Euro bubble. It should not be a shock that EU institutions are skewed towards well-educated cosmopolitans who do have a relatively similar global view of what the EU should become. And the average EU citizen does not live like the average applicant for the EU Commission, who usually have multiple degrees from prestigious universities. Politico has reported that many people that arrive in Brussels attempt to get ahead in the EU, which is obvious provided the already difficult steps it takes to get there. But this may also result and candidates having to give into the euro bubble, which can make it more difficult for different but important views on proactive EU reform to see the light.